that experience became forever unforgettable in my life. I can still remember the place. I can still remember the singers. I can still remember the occasions. And I've changed forever. And by the grace of God, the same experience is what God is wanting me to share with the world. That even you can be saved. That you will know that you know that you know a new life has begun in your life. I'm excited to welcome you to Tunde Fumi YouTube channel. We ask that you please subscribe to our channel for inspirational songs, powerful messages, and content that will bless you. Please do subscribe and you will never remain the same again. God bless you. Of the Lord. I go to the third part of this discussion. Being born again, what does it mean? It means to be born of water. You look at that word again. Jesus said, He said, very John chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 5. He said, Verily I see unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. But why do you say water? Does it mean water baptism? Not at all. Because there are people that now claim when you are baptized in water, you are saved. No. Either you are baptized as an infant or baptized as an adult, that's not what saves you. You only get baptized in water. You are supposed to be baptized in water after you have been saved. The word, the water here indicates the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, he said, For the word of God is pure, very quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So the word of God pierces soul. The word of God washes. And that washing power of the word is what he's referring to. He said, even to the piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thought and the intent of the earth. That's the power of the word. That's why Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 said that he might sanctify and cleanse him with the water the water now by the word. You see, the instrumentality of the word is in salvation. The instrumentality of the word is also involved in our sanctification. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 17 verse 17, sanctify them to thy truth, thy word is true. You see, therefore, you cannot rule out the word and being saved you need to hear the word. You need to believe the word. You need to obey the word. And that's obeying the word at the point of salvation is crying out and praying for repentance. Of course, you keep praying more and then you get also sanctified. This is what it means to be born again. Therefore, we'll conclude by saying you must be born again. Don't say I was born into church. Forget that now. The Bible did not say you must be born in church. You don't have to be born in church. The Bible didn't say you must be born of a pastor. You don't have to be born by a pastor. The Bible didn't say you must be born in one shallow life, in one deeper life, in one uh, CAC, in one redeem. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be so. It just says here you must be born again. That means you must be born twice. If you are not born twice, you will die twice. If you are born the first time by your parents, but you are not born the second time by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, by God Himself, born of God. If you are not born the second time, then you will die twice. Because when you die physically, that's just the first day. But the second death, which is Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22 speaks about, he who is not born twice will die twice, die physically and die eternally. I pray. That will not be your point question. That's why you need to be born again that you may be able to live with the Lord entirely in the end. You see, what does it mean to be born twice? Therefore, we have said it. Just give your life to Christ. Know that Jesus died for your sin. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Be born again. Be born anew. Be made a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He can't be an old person living the whole life and claim to be a believer. Not at all. He is a new creature. All things, all of them are passed away. The old, all things are become new. Therefore, not self-deception now. He who is saved, 
is made new. I say that in this way. Is made a new man. Is made a new man because he said, except a man, be, he said he is a new creature. Put it this way: new man made. That's salvation. That the whole Jew is gone. He's now a new man. New man made. If your life has not changed, it's still like before. Or maybe there was a time you claim to be saved, but you have returned back to your old life. Not at all. He said he's a new man. New man made. That's salvation. And of course, made men new. That's salvation. Salvation makes a man new. And then made new men. That is true salvation. And I pray the genuine experience beyond church claims, beyond denominational claims, beyond my pastor says, beyond my church claims, beyond my father told me so. He said that you will repeat about after him. I sleep that now. Just personal experience that you know that you know that I'm a new man. I need to tell you that being saved is a personal experience. When I gave my life to the Lord, exactly 13, 9, 29 years ago, I didn't go to any pastor to seek salvation. I heard the message. I heard the song. It wasn't even to the message I gave my life to the Lord. Just a lyrics, a part of the lyrics in the song that says, if you miss ever, you will come. And that's what the same thing I came to tell you. If you miss heaven, you will come. Give your life to Christ and you will be sure that heaven will be yours. And I cried as a child, called on God, gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And since that day, by the grace of God, that experience became forever unforgettable in my life. I can still remember the place. I can still remember the singers. I can still remember the occasions. And I've changed forever. And by the grace of God, the same experience is what God is wanting me to share with the world. That even you can be saved. That you will know that you know that you know that a new life has begun in your life. Please, let's pray together. Father, I ask for as many who have not known you genuinely as Lord and Savior, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will experience you. And there will be a personal, practical experience of salvation that they will have. They will be born of God with no sin, no hatred, and no denier of the Godhead. They will be born of the Spirit convicted by the Holy Ghost, convinced by the Holy Ghost, converted by the Holy Ghost. And Lord, they will be born of water, the water of the Word of God, the powerful Word of God, will pierce through into them, turn them to you, and there will be a personal experience of salvation, a practical experience of restoration, grace for the new life, to begin again and live the life that pleases the Lord. Lord, for those out there who once knew you, but the reality of their life today shows that they are just like every other person out there in the world, sinners, living lives that are not glorifying to God. I pray for them, restore them to yourself again. Come back home, brother. Come back home, sister. Have a new life, a blessed life. And the Lord change, bless, and make your life radiant again. I pray for these ones, Lord. They will not be deceived by the deceptive words of everybody who is born again, who is going on in the world. But they will know that they are to live a different life, righteous life, beautiful life, glorious life, that shows that, Lord, they have started again, and they will never stop the journey. Let that life begin, a beautiful life from this day, of righteousness and holiness and denial of the flesh, living a Christian life. I pray, Lord, being born again will be a reality in every life that sees this, that washes this. In Jesus' name, we are praying. It's a beautiful start, but we're going to continue tomorrow 
But I started a simple way today, but it's a serious word we have to share to God. And you know, tomorrow is the D day actually, 30th of May, 1993. It's still very fresh in my mind as I reenact the experience of 30th of May, 1993, tomorrow. Please join me. It will be a fantastic time because, by God's grace, the, whole, the entirety of my experience, by the grace of God, I will relay to the world of believers around the world. 30th of May, my life got saved that year. And tomorrow, as you join me for that fantastic edition, you will never remain the same again. God bless you. Please join me about the same time tomorrow for that special edition. 30th of May. For me, unforgettable. And I will leave it and share it with you. And I do believe God lies out there but touched by that experience again. I got saved many out there, we also be saved. None of us and our families will be lost. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you tomorrow.